and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Jund Hengecleave. That's right. We're going with Jund Hengecleave. I thought about naming this deck Jund Stompy, but this is Embercleave and the Great Henge. That's the two pillars of this deck's top end, what the deck is built around. This is a donation deck. That's what the two Ds over here stand for by the decks. And as you can see today, we got all donation decks today, all new, uh, cool, fun decks. It's going to be a fun Sunday stream, Sunday fun day, if you will. But yeah, so we got this John Tenchcleave deck. So we are playing uh, some large creatures that um, we're trying to get out pretty early. We got Knight of the Ebon Legion that, of course, when you activate its ability can be very large. And then Rotting Regisaur, Bone Crusher Giant, Questing Beast, um, especially Rotting Regisaur and Questing Beast. The, those two are really like what, what we're trying to get to early on. We got our, our acceleration towards them with Paradise Druid Gilded Goose. Uh, we have our Once Upon a Times to help find more of them. But yeah, we're trying to get Rotting Regisaur, Questing Beast in play and attacking with them. All right, so once they're in play, <clears throat> then we can we can afford the Great Henge, especially with Rotting Regisaur, because of course it costs uh, one less to cast. Where uh, for each or like for the greatest power among your creatures, and Rotting Regisaur has seven powers, so that works out perfectly with the seven for the Great Henge. <clears throat> so if you have a Rotting Regisaur in play, you can play the Great Henge immediately. So I could definitely see like turn five or at least whenever we have five mana because the accelerants also whenever we have five mana dropping rotting regisaur then immediately dropping the great henge afterwards i think that's going to be a common play here but then whenever we're attacking with rotting regisaur and questing beast we all, we have the ember cleave give them plus one plus one double strike trample obviously this thing you know eight power double strike trample that's just completely absurd but then questing beast is just as absurd. It's only five power double strike trample, but it has death touch. So the the first uh, the first strike with the death touch um, means that you kill any blocker immediately, and then all the rest of the damage in the first strike and the regular um, regular strike. I guess the other the normal combat damage, all of that tramples over. So yeah, our deck's hitting hard and everything. Let's see sideboard. Obviously, Veil of Summer is just amazing. We got good removal, Grasp, Trophy, Rider. Um, if we're playing against Aggro, we got some Sweepers with Masker Girls. And that Masker Girl, we can find it off Once Upon a Time, and it's also a large creature for the Great Henge. Um, <clears throat> against Control, we got a couple Ashioks to, if they're not playing very many win conditions, to help mill them out. And then against Oko, we got Triple Spyglass in here, because obviously Oko is a car that's going to be difficult for us to deal with. Um, you know, like it turning Rotting Registor into a 3-3. Same with Questing Beast, Ember Cleave, Great Henge. Turning all that stuff into 3-3s is really annoying. So we got Triple Spyglass to help shut down Oko. All right. Donation decks. As you all know, we're going to play through a league here. Let's see if we can get to five wins before two losses. Here we go. Some Jund, Ember Cleave. No. Henge cleave. There we go. Said it right. John Henge cleave. So let's see how this goes. All right, let's go ahead and keep this one. What lands are those, Team Diabetes? I'm not sure if we're supposed to be paying a whole lot of life. New Eldraine ones not animated with the Planeswalker symbol. Okay. The... It, 
It's like Abzan. It's like Abzan colors. I think. Yeah, they have the castles in the background. And it's like Abzan color. Okay, cool. Yep. I gotcha. All right, I'll use those sleeves up next. Uh, Team Diabetes, do you want me to play your deck fourth and play Simic Flash second? Because I think I think that I think Kendis would would like that also. If you want me to switch yours. Okay, so. I really don't want to keep shocking. Okay, that works. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, well, I'll check with, with Candice. All right, so Candice, do you want me to move your, your donation deck up to second? Yep. Yep, the other donator is going to be... They have to go out do a little shopping. And so they're going to be gone, so they wanted to switch. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, our lands our lands are kind of awkward, but that's that's what aggro decks do to you. They they make your mana base kind of awkward. So I killed the Dodger because they can make the other. They could have made the Dodger unblockable. Where even though they could pair a shock up with the fervent champion. The problem with qu playing Questing Beast is I may die. There's actually a pretty good chance of me dying. If they just have if they have any haste creature plus one mana, I die. So instead I could just make a food with goose and sack it and gain three life. But then we're just in the exact same spot we are the next turn. So it doesn't really help us out too much. I guess we, we really should attack. I'm hoping no haste creature over there. Well, that's that's game. Bleh. They just make this unblockable. Um, attack with everything. It's six six triggers. It's seven. <clears throat> Unfortunately, too many shock lands there, and and we had fabled passage instead of just an actual basic. Okay, so Assassin's Trophy is good against Cavalcade. Let's grab that. We probably want these Masker Girls. Kill their little 1-1s. One -ones. Rider can just be a life-linking creature. Okay. I'm going to take out the Return of the Wild Speaker. That one's kind of slow. That one doesn't gain a lot of life like the Great Henge does. Um... Not exactly sure what else I want to do. I kind of like everything else that we got going on. I think maybe I take out Knight of the Ebon Legion, actually. No, Par Paradise Druid, it's still going to... Paradise Druid still makes our top end better. 
Naughty the Ebon Legion just kind of dies to shock and, and everything. And I don't know if we'll have time to act to activate. I think I'd rather have Paradise Druid. I'm going to take out one Ember Cleave. I'm going to play two Knight. I do like that Knight's a card that we get to get out of our hand right away. Cheap cards when you're playing Rotting Registrar are always good. Yeah, certainly. Yep, a one mana, one two can and do some useful blocking as well. All right, so turn one, Goose. Turn two, tap land, Goose. Hmm. It is unfortunate, though, that <laughs> the match against Mono Red is the match that we draw only shock lands every game. Aguanaba. Yeah, Night of the Ebon Legion is definitely good in the deck. It's a really cheap creature for you to cycle with with the Great Henge, but then it, it pairs so well with Ember Cleave. You know, if you have an Ember Cleave on a Night of the Ebon Legion and you activate it. It gets really large and has um, has death touch and then double strike trample. It's not the Ebon Legion is amazing with Ember Cleave. And then as we just just talking about, it's good with um, Good with Great Henge also. Face in Christ. So make a food token, because then if we just draw a land, I think that's lethal. I think that's lethal, right? Because then we get activate, activate. So yeah, we, we can activate this twice. So six plus four is ten, plus three is thirteen. So there we go. All right. Yeah, and I do like Knight on the draw even more. Maybe we should just play all four Knights. It is a good blocker on the draw. Okay, if we play the Knights...
Maybe I guess I do take out Paradise Druid. <clears throat> or like a, a Once Upon a Time. So Druid, Once Upon a Time, Great Henge. Those are the, the slots that I'm thinking about. Should I play a Spyglass to stop three mana Chandra? Maybe not. All right, let's try this. Certainly slower, but more powerful. So I can play Once Upon a Time to look for a goose for turn one. But I guess we already got a Knight of the Ebon Legion. Um, all right, so I'm playing Knight on one. Turn two, I play a tap land, and then do I want to play a goose or a knight? Goose helps with the double black for like Murderous Rider and stuff. I think I want that. Yeah, so it basically be do I like on turn two, do I want to play another knight here as another one two blocker or play a goose? I think with with our like you know, I think that having another black source is pretty valuable. Another knight could have blocked better here. So then we wouldn't be able to murderous rider the steam can either. Alright, let's just play the rotting register. Steam can can't really get through rotting register. Yeah, like. And they could pair up some burn spells for it. Yeah, I would expect them to have Frenzy in the deck. Both of my Massacre Girls are down at the bottom of the library. We saw them both in the... This is the problem with Rotting Registor, though. I certainly like all these cards.
<clears throat> so playing quest so playing the questing beast here instead of trophying the calamity means that it's going to be easier for us to double spell next turn to like whatever we draw it's going to be easier to, to pair up our draw stuff with our trophy to empty our hand because so obviously we're going to be discarding the stomping ground here also that with them they missed a land drop so trophy gives them like another another mana which is maybe something i don't want That was like a perfect light of the stage. Give them the third land and a light of the stage to give them three more mana with Steamkin. That was pretty perfect. And now they can play another Steamkin and a Shock. On the Goose. That worked out well. They, they may have double shock. Yeah, it looks like a... That was a... That was a great light up the stage. I don't think it could be possibly be better. Really considering trophying the Steamkin there before they could add this this extra mana. This Fable Passage is a really good draw step, though, because we know both both Massacre Girls are down at the bottom of the library, so being able to shuffle is really needed. Obviously, we'd love to draw, like, the Great Henge, Massacre Girl. Um, yeah, there's replace. Yeah. Um, do you have Ginger Brute instead if you need to re replace Fervent Champion? Um, Tin Street Dodger is a, a good one, but you may already be using that. So Ginger Brute, maybe. It's really weird just sacrificing this Gorge Spitter for one point of damage. I would have tr trophied the, the steam can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ginger Brute's a lot worse than it's worse than Fervent Champion. But if you know, if you don't have the, if you don't have the rare wild card, and you need a replacement. 
That's what I'd recommend there. Welcome to my symphony of the more, the messier. I can take one damage a turn from 10th Street Dodger. Goose is going to be gaining me three life a turn. Oh, right. No, it's not. Oh, my gosh. And then I just discard. Wow. Well, I forgot about the Rotting Registrar and the, the Tybalt. <laughs> That was not good. Yeah, I guess I need to trophy that Tybalt. <laughs> uh, that did not go well. That could have been better. I adore. Whoops. It's not looking like it's going to matter too much, but yeah, I could have trophied that Tybalt and then and had an extra food in play. Mm. They would just have a backup Tybalt. You don't look scared. I can fix that. It's not looking like it's going to matter too much. So best case scenario, we take three here, go down to two, and then I draw Masker Girl to wipe the battlefield, but then I take three damage from these things, and I can't gain life. So, I don't, so obviously I, I need to trophy the Tybalt but it would not have mattered. All right, well, let's crack a pack. The card that I sorely missed in that matchup was Legion's End. Wish we had some Legion's End. But I guess if we don't have any, if we don't draw Ember Cleave or Great Henge in our Ember, in our uh, Henge Cleave deck, it makes our life harder. Grixis, huh? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's a yeah, that's a good call. Yeah, against Edgewall Innkeeper in Order of Midnight, you really want Legions end there. Good call. Alright, reanimate 
deck can be rough. This is the kind of deck that's not too consistent, but whenever they have, you know, whenever they curve out and they are playing Bonder Revival on turn five, putting in, you know, like Dracuseth and Agent of Treachery, there's not much that beats that. Where's our Great Hinges? I will draw Great Hinge. Draw some Ember Cleave. Not more land. I know I just put a land down to the bottom, so like Fabled Passage, sh shuffling and getting a land out of the deck doesn't work super well. All right, they didn't find anything for Questing Beast. So this looks like a good Veil vale of Summer matchup. Ashiok. Can do some work. All right, so if we play those two. Maybe a Murderous Rider. Let's get rid of Bone Crusher Giant. Get rid of. Once upon a time, just putting in a bunch more spells, having less creatures. All right, so that's 62. What are we doing for our last two? Like, Trophy is good against Dracuseth. Not as good against Agent of Treachery. Hey, Alphaner. Um, I really don't know what I want to do with these last two. I mean, I guess like they're not blocking. So like Ember Cleave is less valuable whenever people are not blocking. Their deck really just doesn't block. I'm going to take out a couple Ember Cleaves. Yeah, I think you're I think you're kinda unlucky there, Cyrus. Been playing against a good amount of dance. And that's why he got the the Ashiox in here for dance. Um Cause you know, I, I've been playing a you know, a lot every day and I don't think I've seen dance in weeks. Alright, well we got turn two Ashiok. That's kinda cool. I could also go turn two Rotting Regisaur, trying to set up turn three Great Henge, but then I don't have double green anymore. I 
<laughs> I just gotta loosen up so I can dance some more. I'm never gonna dance again. It's guilty fear I've got no rhythm. I guess I'm gonna go turn to rotting regisaur. And then Henge into Druid. Because, see, like, they're not going to reanimate stuff till like, turn 5. So, like, we don't have to have Ashiok down immediately. The the one thing about keeping Ashiok in hand, though, of course, is they're, they're certainly a Thought Erasure deck. But that that really wants me to get the Great Henge down faster. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you, Scotty. I'm glad I'm glad you're liking the stream, though. This is what the deck's supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah, I like having Greyhenge. They could definitely have removal for artifacts and Grixis Colors, you know, like Bedevil and Grass Rampage are, are pretty highly played. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if they had one of those two, Bedevil or Grass Rampage. Especially Bedevil. Wouldn't be wouldn't be too surprised at Bedevil. I lead the way, but my brother knows. My plan is crystallizing. Hmm. I guess I don't have the ability to Ashiok and do anything else. Oh wait, I got Paradise Druid. Sweet. Okay. Nope. Do not activate Knight of the Ebon Legion. Okay, good. That's cool. Well, that was like perfect. Oh, we're one and one now. I meant to. I thought I was like, meant to update the record after our loss. All right, one and one. Yeah, that was pretty perfect. Okay. We had to have that warm up warm up match. Get that out of the way. Oh, thanks, Scotty. Yeah, I like playing lots of different decks and everything, you know, like that's, you know, not everybody wants to play, you know, like the, the best deck in the format or, you know, like the same deck every day. And, you know, there's there's just lots of Magic players. Some people like playing, you know, John Stompy deck. Some people like playing Blue-White Control, you know, people like playing different things. And so try to play everything. GG's. Hmm. Alright, once upon a time means I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. We'll probably have green man in the top five with having none in the seven. That means green man in the top twelve. Yeah. We did it. Are there any thousand year storm decks you've made since Elder Moon? I I have not made any, but we have played one. I played a donation deck. And thanks, Lumasi, of a Thousand Year Storm deck. It was Teamer, um, Teamer Storm. And I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can find that one for you. 
Let's go to youtube.com. Teamer Storm. Todd Stevens. There we go. Boom. Huh. Bone Crusher Giant. Seems perfect. I'm going to go ahead and lead with Paradise Druid, though. Because I don't think this Pell Collector is going to grow to be bigger than 2-2 two -two this turn. I think it will be exactly 2-2. Two -two. And then our Bone Crusher Giant can kill it. You're welcome, Lumasi. Oh really, Cyrus? You've already been you or you're all you've always been a blue control type player. So yeah, this is this is definitely a lot different. That's cool. Glad you're getting out of your element a little bit. All right, my, my plan here is to have Rotting Registrar block Questing Beast. That's my plan. I, I really want them to attack, play Questing Beast and attack. Darn it. Plan did not work. I don't want to discard any of these things. This is the problem with Rotting Regisaur, is when you have to two for one yourself, three for one yourself, it's not great. I mean, I should have just taken that. Yeah, I should have just taken that. That was that was a really bad assassin's trophy. I didn't quite do the math. I had had lethal here. Now if they could play a one drop. Oh my gosh, they have a one drop. Well, that just cost me that that trophy just cost me this game. If I just don't trophy, they're tapped out completely, and I just untap play questing beast, and it's thirteen damage. Wow, what a what a bad play. That was just I had already determined that I was gonna be trophying whenever I passed the turn. I'd already been determined that. And I didn't I didn't reassess after they played Hellkite and and swung in and, and were tapped out. Why'd they have to have a one drop to punish me like that? Yeah, Questing Beast has Vigilance, but that means I have to trade Questing Beast for Pelt Collector here, and if they have another Hellkite, I'm dead. Guess I guess I should hold back Goose to block. That was really bad. Ugh. 
course their last card's Collision Colossus. Why not? Hey, Paul. Right as I was casting that trophy, I knew that it was. I knew that I messed up. And it, I just cast it too quickly. Played too fast. Oh, my day was going a lot better like <laughs> ten minutes ago or five minutes ago before I I messed that game up really bad. That hurt. So we have more removal we can bring in. I'm going to take out the knights this time. I think this time I don't want to spend mana on them. I think I do want Ember Cleave in case that scenario presents itself, and I do want the Grey Henge. Man, I'm upset, I'm upset I messed that game up. My opponent had, like, the perfect cards to really punish me with having the one drop. And then also having Colossus. It's unfortunate. Four Pelt Collectors in the deck is the only one drop. Already had one in play. Yet they had another in hand. The problem with Rotting Registrar on turn two is it just gets rid of, like, your entire hand. If I would have played Rotting Registrar here, I, I don't get to follow up with Murderous Rider next turn, so I won't have double black anymore. So instead, we could just lead off with Murderous Rider, get rid of this Pelt Collector that's going to be a really difficult one drop. And now I can discard the Temple and go grab another Swamp.
Oh, finally, my opponent's not playing like the great, like their uh, best card on curve there. The way to turn. All right, come on, Greyhenge. I wouldn't mind Ember Cleave either. Okay, we, well, we got a couple seven sixes. And it's pretty big. But they got three cards in hand. Good, good. I like seeing both of those. So I don't love attacking with Rotting Registrar because it just trades with one Spellbreaker. Like if, if we attack with both, they double block one, I just trade with one Spellbreaker. I don't really love that. I think we have really good top end if we draw it. Well, I guess not. I don't remember exactly what Avaricious Dragon does. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Avaricious Dragon and Rotting Registrar do play well together. Bleh. We have drawn very poorly. Find finality would be really nice. Yeah, Ember Cleave. On Ember Cleave, we got three of you in here. 
finally. So the real question is attack with one dino or two. I think I just want to attack with one. a good block for me. It's not a good block for them. Should have put in another 3-3 three, three in here. If they're going to block with more than two, two four fours. It's either just block with the two four fours or block with an additional three three to protect against Ember Cleave. All right, so they have double Hellkite activation. That could kill Ryder and Druid if I attack with Druid. Block's not going to get it done. They're just taking lethal here. Sweet. Ember Cleave. Oh, whoops. Wrong way. Uh, Discord is like... Um... Ah, that was not game... That was not game three? Ah, uh, I didn't win that, ma that match. I don't know. How... How can... Does anybody have a good description for Discord? It's like a... Um, I don't know. I'm sure somebody's going to type out a, a good description. I don't know what IRC is. So it's a chat community. There we go. It's a multi-room chat hangout. Yeah, an organized chat room. Okay, there we go. What about to get rid of one of these?
No, I, I definitely want Murderous Rider in this matchup. But basically, I'll, I'll just keep the two lands and see if we draw land. Kind of thing. Why do they just have to have another perfect hand? Their hands with Pelt Collector are so much better than hands without Pelt Collector. Ugh. So, like, I could play Rotting Register to try to block, but then we're going to have to just discard, like, our whole hand. Ugh. I was not planning on playing Rotting Register first. I was planning on playing these things first. But Pell Collector into Goblin. Played Gruel a good amount. I basically never have Pell Collector on turn one. They always got it. I wish they would have attacked there. So I'm assuming they got... It's a terrible draw step. I'm assuming they got Collision Colossus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know Boots. Boots, two puppers. Been to his house a, a few times. With them, they're adorable. Alright, so I could Noxious Grasp that thing and save my Rotting Regisaur. But then all that's going to mean is I just discard the other Rotting Regisaur. And I use Noxious Grasp on a creature that was going to die anyway. I guess I'll kill the 3-3 three, three, even though it doesn't matter which one I kill. Sure. If I target the 3-3, the three, three, then the other one would have turned into a 3-3. Three, three. Wow, that's perfect. Yay. I'm glad I auto-tapped that. I would say, yeah. If your goal, if your goal is winning, I would be recommending playing the Simic Food type deck. 
right now, not Mardu Knights. I don't I think Mardu Knights was a good choice against. So I think I want them to Colossus this thing, right? So then Colossus, so they want, get one trample damage over. Pulp, this Pulp Collector draws to a 3-3. Three, three. So it's the same amount of damage whether I block this one or block the other one. Oh, they got Embercleave. Never mind, I'm dead. Need trophy for a Zember Cleave. I am so glad they're attacking with everything. And not just attacking with the Pelt Collector. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to block with the goose there. Oh, I guess I have to. Yeah, I guess I had to. Okay. So... Uh, does that save me? I go to four. No. This Paradise Druid kills me. So I ha oh, wait. No, we, yeah, we go down to exactly zero. Four... 8, 12. I have, I have 12, basically 12 life, but this does 12 damage. So you go to exactly zero. Um, so, like, what can I hit off of once upon a time, though? Yeah, I think. I think my best chance. is hitting Goose off of this. Oh, no. Uh, oh, wait. Um, figure this out. Are you kidding me? You left me with the black mana? I need to be left with the green mana for Goose. Okay, I guess I'm so I'm not dead actually because the the lifelink on Rider because yeah if they just attack here 
I double block and I don't quite die, but I almost die. So I guess I'm not dead. Dead. Whoa! They killed they killed the rider first? That means their pulp collector dies. I don't gain the, the life, but then the, the pelt collector dies. Huh. Okay, well. So that was not good tapping by me, I guess. Go down to two. That was bad tapping by me. I need to use one green with that and one swamp. No, not the Evan Legion. I'm still alive at one life if they draw nothing. I still get to untap and have one life. But I could have been, I could have had three life. Yeah, there's still a chance. Having three life would have been a lot better than having one. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on, Arena. Like, I can't do anything about it, Kendis. Still alive for now. Draw land. You draw land. Yay. Oh, no. At least we got a scry land, the best land. Yay. I guess I don't get to keep up. I guess if I cast Great Henge, I don't get to keep up Trophy. Alright, that's probably going to do it. I think Goose is better with the... Getting like the food and everything. Yay! Goose basically means that we don't we don't die now. Oh, that was tough. That was tough. My opponent made the the bad decision of they let their their five five die. That's the only the only reason why I won that is because they. Uh, with the ordering, they killed the life linker first instead of the 5-3, where the 5-3 killed their 5-5. Five five. <laughs> yeah, Ember Cleave Goose. The killer goose. Alright, we get another pack. <laughs> goose game. Uh, more gems. 
I have a mythic wild card. Um, there's a jousting dummy over there. Tall as a beanstalk. Resolute rider. Can anybody guess what this card is right here? Can anybody tell what this card is by that, <laughs> by that right there? I mean, if you could tell this was Resolute Rider, you're pretty good. Oh, I can't even figure out what this card is. Oh, it doesn't doesn't tell me. All right, that button worked. Oh, yeah, maybe those were the gems. No, Matthew, if if they attacked with Paradise Druid there that turn, how are you saying, like, they missed lethal because they could have killed the Rider first? If they attacked with Paradise Druid that turn also, I would have had... I would have had my 3-4 block the Paradise Druid and gain... I would have gained 3 life with that block. And then I would have had the 5-3 just get chumped by the 5-5. Five five. Yeah, we got a good opener. Now all we need is a, a large creature to get this Great Henge out there. We have the Knight of the Ebon Legion that can help us, though. You know, so we'll cast the the once upon a time turn one. Yeah, I'll, I'll reset after this match, because yeah, y'all are right. It's it is laggy. Usually, we can play for like an hour and a half before we have to reset. But I guess this is an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, I probably should have just reset here. More goose. Do you think our opponent's playing mono red? Okay, cool. Yep, I I'm right there with you, excerpts. I, I am glad. Oh, we we actually play against Esper Dance? Wow. The matchup that, that Cyrus said is... is really difficult. And I said that I haven't played against Esper Dance in, you know, weeks. And we actually play against it. Yeah, we got our two Ashioks in the board. Cyrus had been playing with three. I took one out. So because of Kaya's Wrath, I don't really want to play another threat out there, but the problem with that is that if there is a Kaya's Wrath with the Goose dying, I don't have a fourth land.
Mm. Really wanted to draw a land there to activate Knight, but getting that Doom Foretold off the battlefield is the most important thing. All right, so they're not playing mono red. I'm one mana short, even if we draw a land of like, you know, activate, then play Great Henge. I can see, even if we would have drawn a land there. I would have been one land short. Now if we draw a land, I can do that, because now Knight will be seven power. I require servants. Your corpse will volunteer. Little death never hurt anyone. Ugh, looks like you're on your own now. We never drew a land. I, you know, turn turn one. I played the Once Upon a Time, and I saw either two or three lands, and I put them down to the bottom. And we haven't drawn a single other land because you know we had three land at hand, but no land for us. We gave our opponent a land with a trophy, though. All right, going to go ahead and shuffle up, get those lands that are down at the bottom, get those back. So I kind of expect my opponent to have another dance with them firing off that one. One just one mana short, expecting them to have another one. But obviously, I hope they don't. But I'm gonna be taking Gilded Goose out of this matchup. Card I'm gonna be sideboarding out. I don't really want Gilded Goose in the Kaya Kaya's Wrath matchup. The life isn't too important. I don't know, maybe it's just Paradise Druids. I guess it does help speed us up.
Honestly, really surprising that they would play Othakaya instead of playing the Murderous Rider. Because playing the Murderous Rider, when, when you have Othakaya in hand, means that you're going to have lethal the next turn, because you know that I have the Bone Crusher Giant. Alright, so it's not lethal anyway. Uh, you have to do the exclamation point first there, Goblin. Yeah, we need to reset Arena. Man, it's so bad. All right, bring in 11. So Return of the Wild Speaker is a good card draw card, but it actually working is not very likely. All right, taking out Rotting Register because the control deck has a lot of ways to deal with the seven six. Um, discarding cards is not something that we can really do in this matchup. This is not a a. We can discard cards. Like, if, when we got stuff like Veil of Summer, I can't just be discarding cards. Riding Regisaur against Control does not work too well. Yeah, Hen yep, my creature count's definitely down, so Henge is worse, but Henge is so powerful. That I'm, I want to keep them all in. I want cards that can completely take over and, and be worth, you know, four, five, six cards, which Greyhenge can be. I would probably say ooh, Worthy Knight, Fairy Vandal, or Grumgully. Probably Grumgully. Honestly, I like Grumgully quite a bit. I think Gruel is a good, good, uh, good colors to draft. These Doom Foretolds really are a problem, aren't they?
So in case of... Okay, in, in case of white source... And uh, Kaya's Wrath, I'd, I wanted to keep the Haze creature back. Alright, so it looks like we got this one. <laughs> what? Why would you not play Kaya's Wrath? What are you doing? You got gifted like your only possible land to stay alive here. And just play a Doom Foretold? Okay. All right, maybe Spyglass isn't good against Do Doom Foretold. So what three do we want to play? I'm going to play the Paradise Druids. And... I, I don't really expect this to pump for lethal. But, I mean, it has the potential to draw, you know, like four cards, maybe. So, like, if we have, if we untap with Questing Beast, I don't know if we'll ever do that. But if we, if we do that, then we could draw four. I mean, I don't, I don't think I really like any of these other ones. I mean, I guess it's just either that or Goose. Or, like, em Ember Cleave killing the opponents a lot. Like, if we're looking for a card to kill the opponent, there's a lot better chance Ember Cleave kills them than Return of the Wild Speaker kills them. So I think it's, it's one of these three. Yeah, I'm not really expecting us to have multiple creatures in this matchup. As you saw there, that game, we never attacked with multiple creatures that game. Which is also why Ember Cleave's kind of rough, because it's 5 mana. And then it's also rough against Doom Foretold afterwards. I'm going to play the Goose. Yeah, if it was, if it was always 5 mana draw 4, I'd be playing it. It's just we have, we have to untap with Questing Beast. So, like, we have to have a Questing Beast in play and untap with it and to have the five mana to get the draw four. It's not a, a very likely scenario, but if, if, it would, if it just said five mana draw four, I would I'd be playing it. It's just the, the situations where it's good are situations where we already have, like, a battlefield presence and everything and, and things are going well for us. I'm going to keep this. I like these temples. Love to be able to play this card.
<laughs> he missed Galta. Galta, Great Henge. <clears throat> Bone Crusher Giant. Reptar! Gifted a sub before, decided to stay. Aw, oh, thanks, Reptar. I appreciate that. So I don't want to show my opponent the forest I just drew. Well, thank you so much. Our first sub of the day. Thank you, thank you. This is not so good. I'm glad they thought Erasure Dakarta can't play. And I have Murderous Rider still. No, my opponent really doesn't like those Bone Crusher Giants. Not exactly sure why. Play could certainly backfire on us. They have a Liliana. Beg for your life, which makes your nightmare. Got a second Doom Foretold out of there. Usually I've just seen one Liliana in these decks. That doesn't mean that they're definitely playing only one. That's just... I've usually only seen one in the deck list, but they could certainly have multiple. That was the card that I really wanted to hit. Right on schedule. I've got time. Your 
Only time will tell. Hey, Escoria. Uh, no, this is the first time I've played against Doom Foretold in a couple of weeks. I haven't seen this deck hardly at all, but so you played against it six times in a row? That's pretty crazy. Well, they still got six cards in hand, so we're not really going to win. I wish I would have kept this Great Henge if I would have known that, like, after the Great Henge, our next cards were Forest, Forest, Overgrown Tomb. If I would have known that we were just going to be drawing a bunch of lands like that, I'll protect we would have had the mana for it. But, of course, Great Henge isn't really doing a whole lot if you don't have... If you're just drawing all lands anyway, though. If, you don't, if you're not drawing any creatures. Every time you play Grixis, you play against Doom Foretold. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Just because we have the Ashiok doesn't mean that we're going to win this. They have a ton of a ton of cards in hand. They're not playing lands, so they got to just be all all spells over there. Bale of Summer is obviously a very bad draw because of Teferi. Would have been good otherwise. But with Teferi, not doing anything. Here we go. That is their last Teferi. They exiled all the other ones. I, no, I do not expect Doom Foretold to make a comeback now that Golas is gone. I just think it's a... If it if it actually does, it's a very easy deck to to beat if you want to beat it. So I could, I could lead with Veil of Summer here first so that they cannot counter murderous rider we will meet yay the one with the upside there veil of summer is so much more powerful if we actually get to use it to trade with the spell and draw a card, so. Went for the upside and it paid out, paid off. Said standard would feel so much better if Oko and Teferi were banned. Well, I'm somebody who who doesn't generally like banning stuff. I can't really argue with that. Standard's not more enjoyable with Oko and Teferi.
Yeah, they played dance in the first game. I don't think there's any reason for me to hold on to lands. Alright, so I'm one mana away from being able to play just play a top deck Great Henge for nine mana. No, I don't. I don't think that magic can can do um, errata. Not like when you have like like this. This is just a paper game for the most part. <sighs> really, but two great henge down to the bottom. So we have all three of our Great Henge down here and two Murderous Rider, Bone Crusher Giant. Like, so this is just, these bottom cards are three Great Henge, a Bone Crusher Giant, Once Upon a Time, two Murderous Rider. Those are all good draw steps. So if I take the Bone Crusher Giant, that's just a, so much, so many good cards down at the bottom. You know, so that's what, six cards, right? Seven cards. So that's 16% of the deck. So I, I think I want to reshuffle 16% of the deck. I think that's more valuable than taking a Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, I know they have eradicated cards before, but I don't think that should just be a, a common thing. I don't think there should be like a list of like, you know, five ten standard cards that have been errated and and stuff like that. I think that should just be a a very rare thing, like a Johnny's Pride Mate. Yeah, the the Johnny Pride Mate was not about making arena good. That wasn't, that's just how the card works. You know, the life gain was, <clears throat> was a made before, so you had to select a few, like the counter was a made before, so you had to select a few want to every time. That's just how the rules work. And so they just changed the card. Okay, we got, you know, 16% of our deck back that are good draws, shuffle them back up, plus we got another land out of the deck, so technically more than 16% now, slightly more. Yeah, there could be situations where you don't want counters, like if there's like, if your opponent has like a snarring bridge and a few a few cards in hand, something like that. And so, you know, a card like an Ensnaring Bridge where 
you want your creature to be smaller. I don't know, like a meek stone. Not really stuff in standard. That's why they changed it. Eternal Isolation in Standard. They have 21 cards left in their library. I have 40. <laughs> I think they may have drawn more cards than I have. Oh, right. That's because Ashiok. Ashiok exiled a bunch. That's right. We exiled a bunch with Ashiok. I was like, I, I was like, I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, it doesn't seem like they drew that many more cards than me. They've drawn more, but not that many more. They're playing so slow. Completely forgot that we had Ashiok. It seems like that was like two games ago for how slow this is going. All right, so we had two lands in our graveyard also. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's a third of the deck left is land. Hey, Storm. That match took forever. I think it's 40 minutes, technically. So I understand. Okay. About 40 gems. So I definitely understand why, why you want, um, you know, three Ashioks in the sideboard for that matchup. I so yeah, like the the original sideboard here had three, but then I talked about how we, I took one out. Um, thinking that you know, like we're not going to play Esper Dance. I haven't seen that deck in a couple of weeks, but I guess people are playing it again. So yeah, I can see playing three Ashioks then. 
Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, honestly, you can play four if you want. Like, if, if that deck's really that big of a problem, and, it, like, if if people, are, like, if you actually get paired against the deck quite a bit, I can definitely see playing four Ashiox here in the sideboard. Um, I, I do think that we need a little bit more against aggro, though, and that's why I put in the, the Masker Girls and this extra Assassin's Trophy over here. But it did it did look like we kind of needed some Legion's Ends. That was a card that that we could really use. Um, yes, I'm going to be resetting Arena. I, I reset Arena every single time after we play a deck. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so Legion's End was a card that, that I definitely won in the sideboard. If you fit more... If we fit more Ashiok in here, let's just say we go to three. If we probably go down to one Masker Girl. I I like having the extra Murderous Rider because that's a card that we can hit off of once upon a time, and it's a card that that triggers Great Henge. So I like those I like those more than Noxious Grasp, um, because of that. So I think I want I think we want to keep the extra trophy in here to have another thing to destroy artifacts and enchantments. You know, so we have three cards that destroy those. So I think we would just cut a Veil of Summer and cut a Noxious Grasp. Grasp. So I think that's what I'd probably recommend doing for the sideboard here. Uh, just have the one Masker Girl to be able to get with the Once Upon a Times. All right, besides that, uh, Return of the Wild Speaker I don't think is is necessary at all. I wouldn't play this card. Um, I think instead... Playing four Great Henge is, is a lot of Great Henge. Want something else in here. Maybe the Masker Girl just goes in the main deck? No, maybe not. Could just go to the you could just play the fourth Bone Crusher. Could play a fourth once upon a time to help you hit more creatures and everything. Um, I think we basically have one sideboards or one one main deck slot open here. Honestly, like maybe it's just Golgari Queen, where Golgari Queen gives you another main deck card that kills Oko and can also sacrifice extra lands to draw cards and stuff like that. Works with the goose if you want to do stuff. Golgari Queen's very good. I think I think the deck could have like one Golgari Queen. So there we go. I think that's those are the changes that I recommend trying out. Um, you don't have a Golgari Queen could play. Um, like I said, could just go back to like fourth fourth Bone Crusher, fourth Once Upon a Time, something like that. Because yeah, I think I think our deck could definitely use like a Planeswalker to kind of help out a little bit, um, as we saw against Esper Dance. But like when you're only just playing creatures, it's kind of rough. So. Okay, there we go. So that's Jund Henge Cleave. Yeah, the cleave part is the Ember Cleave. So it's, we're Great Henge, Ember Cleave deck there. Yeah, Golgari Queen's good. Like, especially killing Oko. That's always a good thing. Okay, um, so if you're watching the video later on YouTube, uh, please hit the like button over there and leave a comment as well. I'd really appreciate both of those. And also... Um, if you check out uh, my new Patreon page, I'd really appreciate that. Also, if you'd like to help support my content over there, uh, patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. There's a link down below also. But that's it here for Jund Henchcleave. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.